This is predicting change in refractive error from visual acuities for V551, ocular motility, and refraction. If we look back to Clinical Sciences 1, this is the isoacuity chart that we've shown you before. It's a little confusing to look at, partially because it's from 1932, and partially because it just uses different shades of the same color. So let's update that a little bit. Here we've updated that exact same chart using color patterns to use a heating and cooling map to tell you how acuities change. In this situation, hot colors or redder colors have more reduced acuities, while colder colors, or cooler colors like blue, have better acuities. Just like before, we have the sphere powers along the horizontal axis from minus two to plus five. And on the vertical axis, we have astigmatism from zero to four diopters. What this shows is with different combinations of sphere and astigmatism power, what the acuity is. And there's a wide range of, real, uh, of variability in here that's really too complex for us to use effectively in clinic, but we can use a certain area. This small area here is critically important. Why this area is important is it tells us what 90 to 95 percent of the patients that walk in the door will see when they come in. You might say, well, not everybody's a minus one or a plus one or just has one or two doctors of astigmatism. And you'd be absolutely right. But most people come in with their glasses on. So they are effectively Plano when they come in plus or minus their acuity. So this is why this area is a normal range for most people who have visual complaints with their current glasses to come in with. The worst case scenario is somebody comes in seeing 2200, they've lost their glasses and you have to refract with nothing, which is not the objective. But if you know, know within this area, you can predict based upon their spectacle prescription and their acuities fairly accurately what their acuity will be and what their prescription will be. So let's look at some examples. Patient number one, his chief complaint of blurry distance vision the right eye's prescription is Plano, and their VA through that prescription is 2030. Patient number two has a chief complaint of blurry distance vision. There are six diopter myop in that right eye, but their VA is also 2030. Well, the VAs are the same, but their prescriptions are different. What does this tell us the change in acuity or the change in refractive error should be? In both cases, it's a half diopter of more minus. The problem is at distance. And we've reduced by two lines, 2025 and 2030. So it's a half diopter change. The new prescriptions for patient one would be a half diopter sphere, minus 50. The new prescription for patient two would be minus 650 diopters. But that depends upon the presence or absence of accommodation. With accommodation, a patient can accommodate through the hyperopia, which gives a wider range of normal good acuities with plus. Conversely, without accommodation, plus or minus equally blurs patients and reduces acuity. Now with acuity, also patients' astigmatism can be minified by finding the blur circle through accom by accommodating. So this means accommodation in, high hi in hyperopes actually affects astigmatism less. Guiding rule number one of refraction and prescribing. Never start refracting without knowing where you expect to go. How much prescription change is needed to reduce visual acuity by one line? With accommodation, any amount of hyperopia could still see 2020. It takes a large amount of hyperopia to start to see a reduction in, ac in acuity, either at distance or near. Certainly, you'll see it at near before you'll see it at distance, but with accommodation, they could possibly see 2020 at distance and near, depending on the amount of hyperopia. Conversely, myopia, an increase in a quarter diopter, will reduce acuity by one line. And typically for astigmatism, a half diopter will reduce it by one line. Without accommodation though, hyperopia or myopia equally blur. So a quarter diopter of plus or minus will equally blur acuity by one line and astigmatism but still is by a half diopter. Now what happens when you have hyperopia and astigmatism? That's just a little too complex to use clinically. So we don't calculate that out. We can do that if we wanted to in, the, in here in the, the classroom, but it's not an effective use in the clinical situation typically to predict what their acuity should be from astigmatism and hyperopia. It's better just then to refract the person. Step two, how types of refractive error primarily affect the location of reduced acuity. So with the combination, we expect our hyperopia 
to have worse vision at near, so the acuity should be reduced depending upon the mount. Conversely, myopia is worse at distance and astigmatism is worse at both. So how much, is, if astigmatism is a half diopter, it's gonna affect either both distance and near equally. Without accommodation though, for hyperopes, near tends to be worse than distance, but distance is also reduced. Myopia is just affected by distance and astigmatism is affected by both. So let's look through the steps of how to predict what the change in refractive error is. Does the patient have accommodation? Step one. Ask yourself, does the patient have accommodation? If the patient is over 40, accommodation is reduced or non-existent. Under 40, patient has accommodation and unlikely to have reduced acuities with hyperopia, especially at distance. Step two. What is the acuity difference between distance and near? The same number of reduced lines in acuity is typically the amount of astigmatism power. The difference between the acuity lines is the sphere power. So let's look at an example. In our right eye, we have a distance prescription of 2030, a reduced acuity of 2030, and it nears 2040. There are two lines are the same. 2050 and 2030 are both reduced at distance and near, so we expect two lines times a half diopter or one diopter of astigmatism to be changed in this person's prescription. The next step is, which is more affected, distance or near? If it's distance, it's probably myopia. If it's near, it's more likely to be hyperopia. In this example, we have two examples. The patient sees 20-30 at distance, 20-20 at near, for a change of minus a half diopter because it's worse at distance. In the second example, the distance is 2020, the near is 2030. The same prescription change of a half diopter, but this time it's a hyperopic shift because it's worse at near. Let's look at some more complex examples. On the left, we have a 25 year old patient without glasses on. Their distance vision is 2050 in the right eye and 2060 at, at left eye. At near, it's 2040 right eye, 2040 left eye. So in this case, distance is worse than near by one line and two lines OS. Due to the distance being worse, myopia. Patient has accommodation, so we don't have to worry about a hyperopia right now. Our sphere power, our estimated sphere power because the distance is worse than the near, is a quarter diopter in the right eye and a half diopter in the left eye. The patient has blurred three lines at both distance and near at half diopter per line. We don't know the axis, so we can assume 180 in this situation, but because there's three lines reduced at a half diopter, we expect one and a half diopters of astigmatism. Our final estimated change in prescription or new prescription, right eye minus a quarter minus 150 at 180, left eye minus a half minus 150 at 180. Now let's look at the patient on the right. In this situation, the distance acuities are exactly the same as our first patient. They're 2050 and 2060. However, at near, the right eye sees 2020, and at the left eye sees 2025. Distance is worse by four lines in the right eye and both eyes at a quarter diopter per line. So our sphere powers now are minus one, minus one. The patient has no lines of, blurred, of equally blurred at distance and near in the right eye and one line OS. So we look at that again, we have 2025 at OS and we have a line from at distance that's also reduced, so to half diopter per line, our new prescription, because there was no difference in the right eye, is minus one sphere, and because if there's a difference of one line, a similarity of one line between the two lines, the two acuities, is a half diopter. So our new prescription for the left eye is minus one, minus a half, at 180. Let's look at a patient without accommodation. At distance, the first patient on the left sees 2200, at, in right eye and left eye, and 2020 at near. The patient is worse at distance than near. In fact, the patient sees 2020 at 40 centimeters, and they have no accommodation. So, what does this tell us our sphere power is? In this case, because it's the inverse of the 40 centimeters, we know they see perfectly clear at one distance, they have to be a minus 250 sphere. There is no reduced acuity at both distance and near, so there appears to be no astigmatism in this person. Our predict predicted distance Rx would then be minus two and a half spheres OU. Let's look at another patient on the right. Distance now is 2050, 
right eye, 2060 left eye at distance, but at near, they see 2200 both right eye and left eye. Near vision is so poor that we cannot estimate well what the prescription will be. The patient has no accommodation, so they need at least a two and a half diopter and add it near. VA is reduced by four lines OD, five lines OS, with a quarter diopter per line of sphere and a half diopter line of astigmatism. This creates a wide range of possible prescriptions because their acuity is so poor, we can't predict a good range of what their prescriptions would be. In this situation, our best guess is somewhere between minus one and plus one diopters of sphere and up to two diopters of astigmatism. And similarly in the left eye, it's a wide range as well. Thank you.